dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Gotta stack a flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yo, what's good, original crew? Yeah. It's your boy DJ Nuki, your girl. Sierra Nicole. We're back on the channel with another Kit and C original. Welcome, welcome <laughs> back to the channel, man. We got a video that I've been trying to do for a while, bro. I personally wanted to do this one a long time ago, but I was like, it's was, it was one of the short ones, so we'll throw it to you th during the week, you know? Mm -hmm. We like to give you more of the longer drawn out ones on the weekend, because we know a lot of people got more time. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So, we got the Piggy Place, the Piggy, Piggy Palace. Palace Massacre for mm -hmm. y'all today, man. By Mr. Ballin. One of a lot of y'all favorite crime. Storytellers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah right, right on, right on. <laughs> But with that being said, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you got to do is check out down below. Also, mm -hmm. as always, like he say, smack the like button on this if you want to, to see that thing jiggle and wiggle for some more dollars, man. Every smack on the booty, you get another dollar. Please making that holler. Okay. Holler for the mama. Who's your daddy? <laughs> what that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. You ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> If you have heard of Piggy Palace, the focus of today's story, then you know how horrific this story is. If you've never heard of Piggy Palace, well, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload three or four times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please set the like button up for a practice sales call with William M. Buttlicker. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Robert Picton was born in 1949 in Port Coquitlam in British Columbia, which is about 15 miles to the east of Vancouver. He, along with his brother and sister, were raised by their parents on a big pig farm. In the 1970s, their parents passed away, and so the property was handed down to them. Robert and his brother took over the daily operations of the farm, and their sister decided to just move away. Over the next couple of decades, Robert and his brother attempted to run the pig farm, but pretty quickly they stopped taking care of it, and it fell into decline. Neighbors and visitors recalled seeing seeing the pigs that were still there free roaming the property. And as for the brothers, it appeared they had just stopped bathing, and despite walking all day in mud and pig feces, it seemed like they never took off their boots when they went inside. One of the few farm workers that stayed with the Pictons through the farm's decline was a guy by the name of Bill Hiscox, and he said the farm was a really creepy place. And he also said Robert was a really creepy guy that was prone to just totally bizarre behavior, even though he didn't smoke or drink or use any substance Eventually, the Picton brothers realized they were not cut out to run the pig farm like their family had for generations before them, and they decided their best move was just to sell portions of their land. But neither of them could have guessed just how much their land was worth. From 1994 to 1995, they managed to sell off almost all of their property to an urban developer for over $5 million. And so suddenly, these filthy, failed pig farmers had become millionaires, and neither of them knew what to do with the money. That's one thing for sure. Like I hate when like things like this happen. Like especially when you got like a family that has has built something from the ground up. They worked hard to get what they this pig farm, and it's, it's something that's probably been precious to the family for years. And just because they passed, then the kids get handed to the company. Sometimes. The kid, like, you got to be kind of smart with that. Even though you want to give something to your kids, your kids might not be equipped. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, got to yeah. also realize that. And if you don't want to see your company just go by the wayside, you got any family members, distant family. The kids might be mad, but F them. You know, you yeah, know your yeah. you know your kids more more than anything. So yeah. you know. But then to, instead of just saying, "Hey, matter of fact, how how about we outsource and get somebody else to run it or something?" Something like that. Y'all start selling land, 
and now this developer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you just giving away so much yeah. of your family <laughs> legacy. I, I can never. Man, let that be me. I'm not selling it, bro. A year of just sitting on the money and not doing much with it, they decided they wanted to do some good with their money. And so they established an official charity in 1996 called the Piggy Palace Good Times Society. Their charity's okay. purpose, at least on paper, was to help raise money for various organizations that they deemed worthy by running events like dances and shows. And while that might have been their original intention for this charity, what it ultimately became was a guise to host these wild drug and alcohol-fueled parties inside of their slaughterhouse, which even though it wasn't being used anymore because they were no longer really doing any pig farming, it still conspicuously had big hooks coming down from the ceiling and bloodstains all over the ground underneath them. These Piggy Palace parties became infamous in Coquitlam, drawing crowds of up to 2,000 people, predominantly bikers, drug addicts, and prostitutes from the poverty-stricken downtown east side of Vancouver. Robert had become familiar with that part of Vancouver because he used to go through there all the time to dispose of animal waste products at their rendering plant. Once the Piggy Palace charity was in full swing, Robert started going back into that neighborhood where he would cruise down the 10 block strip called the Low Track and would attempt to recruit people to come to his parties. Most of the people he recruited were down on their luck women who only agreed to go because he was offering them food and money and drugs and alcohol. At the same time Robert was running this recruiting campaign, women from the downtown east side began disappearing in droves. These disappearances were noticed by the men and women in the downtown east side, but they didn't report them because they had a general distrust of the police and of authority figures in general. But as more and more and more women disappeared from the downtown east side, rumors of a serial killer operating in that area started to circulate. Residents began only going outside if they could walk around in a big group of people, and everybody was just totally on edge, keeping careful lookout for anything odd about the neighborhood, people that shouldn't be there, cars that shouldn't be there. But despite this heightened security, women continued to go missing at a rapid rate and nobody knew why. When the police wow. were finally contacted about all these missing women, their response was lacking to say the least. Since there were no bodies of these missing women, the police said it was reasonable to assume that the women were to blame, that their lifestyles must have caught up with them and they either ran off somewhere or perhaps they overdosed somewhere and their bodies just haven't been found yet. Wow. Uh, that wow. happens a lot when it's like people like yeah. this of like, not to say low, but like homeless people, like drug addicts, prostitutes, especially like, it's it's like when they, like those people start coming up missing, it's like, well. Or if anything happens, it's like, well, like it's like, looked over. Like nobody, like, they probably didn't have no family. How you know? Like that is it. Like, you know what you I'm know saying? What I'm saying? Like, and and it, it happens like that a lot. Even that one we have reacted to them with the one in Alaska, that was happening with that. When we went back and watched the movie. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of those girls was coming up missing, oh, oh, and yeah, and yeah. nobody really cared mm -hmm. because who they were, and it's just like, like come on now residents of the downtown east side saying no this is different there's something wrong here the police basically said we're not getting involved when the newspapers found out about this totally apathetic response from the police they criticized them for intentionally deprioritizing these missing women because the majority of them were drug addicts and prostitutes and so therefore weren't worthy of a full investigation the police rejected this claim. On the evening of March 22nd, 1997, so one year after the Piggy Palace had been stood up and they started throwing all these parties, and one year after dozens of women have gone missing from the downtown east side, wow. the Picton's neighbor heard a frantic knock on their front door. They ran over, they opened it up, and what they saw was this woman who was hunched over with one hand on her bleeding stomach and dangling from her wrist was a handcuff. The neighbor was obviously shocked at what they were seeing but they quickly ushered the woman in and they called her an ambulance. The woman was rushed to the hospital where she immediately was put into emergency surgery. Afterwards, while she was in recovery, she told her nurses that her name was Wendy and she had been at one of those piggy palace parties and one of the owners of the farm, Robert Picton, had tried to put a handcuff on her and when he did, she fought back, he drew a knife, he stabbed her in the stomach, she was able to get the knife back, she stabbed him in the face before turning and running out the door and making it to the neighbor's house. Right after she told this story, 
Robert Picton actually showed up at the exact same hospital with a serious laceration on his face that was consistent with being stabbed. The medical staff had already called the police who showed up minutes later and when they went inside, they searched Robert and they found in one of his pockets a handcuff key. And that handcuff key opened the handcuff that was still on Wendy's wrist. And so when the police saw that, they arrested Robert on attempted murder. While Robert was in custody, he explained to officers that Wendy was lying. She was a drug addict and she had come to one of their piggy palace parties and he had caught her trying to rob them. He had confronted her, she drew a knife and that's when a struggle ensued and both of them got stabbed. And Robert said he was just lucky to be alive. The police believed him and dropped all of his charges and let him go. When Robert got back to uh, that's why in my whole time I'm like he got a good ass story that's a good story and he had to think of that but he also have been plotting these stories for the longest what you said you done had and they gonna automatically believe him because we don't honest his family had you know what I'm saying we don't know how how impactful they were to the community with this pill and then she is on their property or whatever and she who she is and uh, who knows? The police probably been out there to parties. And and yeah, like up. you said, and also right, right. You never know. And then, like you said, um, who she is, y'all go automatically like, well, she is, you know, yeah. a drug addict or the process, well, whatever the case may yeah. be. It's crazy, bro. So. Farm Bill Hiscox, the Not bad. Let me yeah. check it back. <laughs> believed him and dropped all of his charges and let him go. When Robert got back to the farm, Bill Hiscox, the one worker who still worked for the Pictons, he grew very suspicious of Robert. He had read all about the missing women from the downtown east side, and he knew Robert regularly went over there to pick up women and brought them back to his parties. And Bill just always had that gut feeling that something was off about Robert. And so he sat on this gut feeling for a couple of months until finally he decided he had to tell someone. And so he called the Crime Stoppers tip line and he told them that he thought Robert had actually attacked Wendy, not the other way around, and that actually Robert was most likely behind some or all of these missing women from the downtown east side. Bill also said that a recent female party guest at the farm had seen a pile of women's clothing inside of Robert's trailer, along with at least 10 purses and women's ID cards. The police followed up with Lisa to confirm what she saw, but she was scared of Robert and said she wasn't going to cooperate. And so the police, without this testimony, were unable to secure a search warrant to investigate this further. And so they kind of just forgot about it and moved on to other cases. Over the next few years, the Pictons continued to throw these huge piggy palace parties until the city finally shut them down. And dozens more women disappeared from the downtown east side without a significant police investigation, despite the fact that Bill was calling them all the time to say he believed Robert Picton was behind all of these disappearances, but they weren't taking him seriously. Finally, in 2002, a former employee of the Picton farm came forward to police and said that he personally had seen illegal weapons inside of Robert's trailer. And this was enough information for the police to get a search warrant and raid the pig farm. And in February of that year, they did just that. And they found inside of Robert's trailer, the illegal guns, as well as several items directly connected to some of the missing women from the downtown east side. Robert was arrested, but let out on bail. He was put under surveillance and told he could not go back to the farm until they were done conducting a more thorough search. And during that more thorough search, they found blood from one of the missing women inside of Robert's trailer. And so Robert was rearrested and charged with murder. While he was being held in jail, he shared his cell with another man who he believed was just another detainee. But he wasn't a detainee, he was actually an undercover police officer, and their entire interaction was being recorded. And on this recording, Robert makes a few shocking statements.
I feel the syringe is up with antifreeze and you inject the stuff and you're dead in about five. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And and the reason why he got sloppy because he got away with so many. After getting away with so many, it's kind of like you get cocky with it. Mm -hmm. And you just like, ain't no way they're going to catch me. They don't care. And you no. just start, after the first one you get sloppy with, then there's another one you get sloppy with. He probably start getting sloppy after like the 30th one. It's so yeah. like, all right, thank you. Because what's, what's towards all the right, end? Boom, boom. And then I got away with that one chick. Right. And what, in 97? Two, all the way to 2002. That's crazy. Like, yeah, and he said, he like, I done got away. They ain't, ain't going to catch gonna me. Do what I'm doing. But he got too sloppy because he was already too sloppy from when from even having a pig farm. Yeah, he yeah, wasn't yeah. even, you know what I'm saying? That's so crazy. I was As Robert admits in this video, he killed 49 people who would turn out to be the majority of the missing women from the downtown east side. After a lengthy investigation, it was determined Robert's killing spree began in 1991, but it really kicked up a notch in 1996 when he and his brother started Piggy Palace because he was able to use their huge parties to lure more victims to his farm faster. And once they were at his farm, he would lure them into his trailer where he would handcuff them, tell them it's over now, and he would inject antifreeze into them or he would strangle them to death. Afterwards, he would move the victim's body to the slaughterhouse where he would butcher them like a pig. A large portion of his victim's remains would be fed to his pigs, and the parts he didn't feed to his pigs he would bring to the rendering plant in the downtown east side, which is not far from where the victim was most likely picked up. A rendering plant takes animal waste products, crushes them up, and turns them into a gelatin. This gelatin is used in many everyday products from candy to cosmetics, which means Robert's victims wound up in things like lipstick and gummy bears. Also, sometimes while Robert was going through this horrific disposal process, he would set aside some of the best cuts of meat and grind them up with pork and turn them into sausage. This sausage was served at piggy palace parties. It was also given to neighbors and food banks and orphanages. After sifting through 300,000 cubic meters of soil and pig feces underneath the Picton farm, investigators were only ever able to find little bits of remains of 20 26 women. Robert was charged with all 26 murders, but only six turned into convictions due to a lack of evidence. He was sentenced to life in prison and is still alive today. His brother and sister were never charged in connection with the crimes. So that's going to do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments. Wow. This was wow. the most wow. disgusting. Oh my. I wonder God, did his brother bro. know that he was doing all of this? Somebody else. Knew. Because the sister moved away, but that don't mean that she probably didn't know that her brother probably yeah, been doing yeah, stuff. Because yeah. he started in 91 before mm. they was, you or know. Or that could have been a possible reason why she did. Who knows? But, oh my, oh my goodness. That is, that's crazy. Gelatin, bro. Can't, oh my God. You ground it up and fed it to people, bro. All these people eating humans, not not even knowing. Oh my fucking gosh, bro! That's crazy. People weren't. My God, you feeding it to the neighbors. You feeding it to the people at the. No, well, think about all the all girls walking around with lipstick. Got people with particles of human or 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 uh, candy. Eating candy, cause you know I love my girls. Uh, even like makeup product, like uh, like well lipstick, but yeah. Like all type of stuff. So Just you know imagine. I be smashing on the gummy worms, but certain. And certain. you don't know where it's going out at. You don't, bro. That's it's... crazy. That is. And how long he had been doing this? For a very long time. This is the most disgusting. And, As, and he said that he was just going to do one more. But if he would have got away with that one more, he would have kept doing it and kept he, doing he, it. And he kept was doing addicted, bro. He would have kept doing it. Talking about he wanted to make the number even. What type of...
That he was so addicted, bro. That's it. And like somebody like that, because he had already beat the guy. He said in the states, which is America, if you don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said he had like I, I was trying to beat the guy number. Mm. You were, he said that guy number was forty seven. You was already at forty nine. You talking about? I just wanted one more to make it even. No, you did that not, so... bro. You just didn't expect to ever get caught. Mm-mm. And you putting Anna free. Like what? What were you like? It wasn't. You didn't say you were sexual assaulting him. You didn't say. You and he said like, when he brought him back to the train, he was like, "It's over now." Yeah. What's over now? Like your life is over. Yeah, I know, just, but like, what in your like, like you just bring bringing these women back? Like, ain't no, can, ain't no you know reason. Ain't no like, man, this is fool. You know, like, and then the way he, the way y'all just be feeling comfortable enough to tell her, I ain't like, bro, we both convicts. What I'm gonna tell you about my charge for? It? And tell you I'm guilty. You know what I'm saying? But like y'all be getting in these, and to be real, he probably been wanting to tell somebody. And, and I and I guess at that moment he felt comfortable because he thought that they were in the was, same boat. He th- but, I thought you was another criminal yeah, too, so I'm going to brag and tell you. Or it's a thing of I got to boast about my crime so you don't try me because now yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, I'm yeah, a serial like, killer. I'm a little cuckoo in the head. So I got to make sure nobody try me in prison. Because a lot of people, like 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 we, said, like we watched the one interview before, mm-hmm. a lot of people go to prison, it ain't... You trying to be the toughest? You just afraid, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. pretend to be the toughest guy in the prison, mm-hmm. and so you gotta tell because you you afraid of, of somebody trying you. Mm-hmm. So you like, I I gotta I gotta one up you. Thanks. I gotta make me look better. Right, but to be real, I'm glad he even opened his lips because if he didn't talk, he oh, would no. he probably would have got away with it because he was slick enough that because, first time. Because they, yeah, I mean they did find like blood from one. But yeah. who knows if y'all would have had any uh, more evidence. evidence for it to like you know for things really to stick. stick. Yeah. So even if you got blood, he could have been like, oh, she probably cut herself here or something. We got blood like all that's over all, the place. You know what I'm saying? So, so I don't know. You really can't connect me to. Even her. though he had all these like, because you know things like that happen all the time. Because you don't got a body. You don't got a. Oh my gosh. He really got. Mm. I just. Mm. And I, I feel, and only twenty six of them. And just imagine though, imagine what? everybody in the world. Mm-hmm. He, he ain't the only. You know, how, you know what's so crazy? Somebody probably doing that that type of stuff right now as we speak. You never know. There's so you, much stuff going on. You, you just never, never know. know people's mindsets, and you can be. Bro, we walk past people every day not knowing that they can what turn they, into a killer, what they're plotting, a rapist, what they're doing, or whatever. What, you don't know. A kidnapper. Bro, it's been plenty of people. We were like, bro, I never expected out of that person. And you were like, you yeah. never know who people truly are until they put in a position. Or some people have so many skeletons in their closet that you were like, so I would regret ever even knowing you. If That's I knew sad. what was it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but rest in peace to every single one of the victims, bro. though. Like, that, that's sad. And I wish the police department could be charged with something. For, mm-hmm. Like, neglect. Something. Because it's still, like, it's, it's workplace neglect. Because y'all didn't even care about the victims. to investigate. And then you had him in you custody had, at you one had point. A, you had a victim but you telling took, you a but story. You, but you decided to take... That's crazy. And obviously, she, and it, obviously, y'all could have went to the neighbors, and she could have vouched. They could have been like, "Yo, she came here panic and a fraud," and that would have led to to y'all to investigate further. That's but, either way, it's no. sad, but right. you know. <laughs> oh man! Hey, with that being yeah. said, y'all spam us up in the comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, let us know y'all thoughts and opinions, man. This was a wild one, man. No, uh, but as always, y'all know how it go. I do go with the name DJ you hit this in. Sierra Coast. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my folks. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Get my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems.